and welcome to episode 117 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who is eight and Jasper who is five. Today is Monday the 18th of April and this is my knitting and crafting podcast. It's been a while. <laughs> Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my regular viewers, thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, I kind of dropped off the face of YouTube back in the middle of March, I was doing my week in vlog series and honestly I was just taking on too much. I was prepping for a yarn show, I was dyeing up my yarn clubs, I was feeling a little bit like everything I was recording was the same and then I had one day where I sat down and I recorded a vlog that day but I spent the entire vlog pretty much just moaning about how much work I had to do and then I thought to myself I can't put this up, this is all that and that's generally a good, a good point at which I go yep yeah, no I've taken on too much. <laughs> So unfortunately, yep, yeah, um, the YouTube channel and the vlogs and everything like that were what I had to give, um, so obviously um, I disappeared for a bit. Um, basically I had East Anglia Yarn Fest so I wasn't able to, I'm trying to remember, my last episode was the 14th of March, um, so was it that the next Monday after the 14th of March? Yeah, so the Monday after that was um, the week before East Anglia and I just couldn't give up the time to sit and record because I was still winding stripes and still trying to get everything prepped for the show. And then the Monday after that, I was traveling back from East Anglia. Um, so I was in a car driving all day, so that wasn't gonna happen. And then it was the Easter holidays. <laughs> so my parents came up to visit for a week. Um, so I wasn't able to record then. And then I've had the kids off for the last week. So yeah, it was kind of four weeks where recording just kind of didn't happen. Um, I did try the week after East Anglia to sit down and do some vlogs, um, but it just didn't work. I had, I just had too much on um, and I was trying to get as much physically done as possible before my parents arrived so I was able to actually take time off over Easter. While my parents were here I did record a vlog. We had um, a day out at Glam's Castle and I did record a vlog while I was there. I just need to sit down and do a little bit of voiceover for it so that I can kind of tell you what you're seeing and what is happening in the vlog basically because I didn't take my camera well no that's not true I took my camera but I didn't take my microphone with me when I recorded that vlog so um, I need to go back and add some audio to it <laughs> um, but hopefully you will get that sometime this week um, yeah and I'm back I am back things are calming down it is Easter Monday today but my kids are back to school today um, so I am able to kind of try and get a bit back into routine which will be nice because it's felt chaotic over the last month or so um, so yeah sorry for disappearing <laughs> um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, some plans and things that I've got for the YouTube channel um, but I will leave that until a little bit later on um, in the episode. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting this episode to be a bit more of a chatty episode, a bit more relaxed because it's been so long um, since I've sat down and recorded one. I've got lots to share and I'm in a chatty mood. Um, so I know some of you quite like the chatty ones and if you do then this is definitely the one for you. Um, but yeah, I have got, having had a month where I've not recorded, I've got quite a lot to share with you, quite a lot to show you, quite a lot I want to talk about, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, I have recorded the first 20 minutes of this video already once, um, and then I realised I'd not put my microphone back on my camera. So the audio would have been horrendous, so we weren't able to use it, so we're second attempting it but that probably means that I'll ramble less and it'll be a lot quicker either that or I'll ramble more we'll see we'll find out so what have I and haven't I said I said welcome back I said hello so yeah welcome back again um hello to anyone that is new and watching the video for the first time if you don't know I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns and I use this channel um, to mostly talk about kind of my crafting and things like that. You get a variety of things so the podcasts are very much kind of sit down and talk about what I've been working on, uh, knitting and crochet and occasionally other crafts and things like that crop up. 
um, as well as sharing a little bit of details about the shop and things towards the end of the episode. And then I do do some daily vlog kind of style things. Um, you will find my week in vlog series is that I've done over the last few months on my channel under a playlist and then um, I will talk a little bit later on about some of my plans going forward with vlogs. Um, I've also been doing, apart from March, um, but January and February you will find my monthly roundup videos as well. Um, there will be a monthly roundup video for March, but I think it's just going to be a March and April together because not much happened in March. <laughs> anyway, what else? Well, so what have I got for you in this episode? So. I'm going to start off with a few announcements because um, I have some prize winners to announce. I've got some finished objects to share with you. Um, I'm going to talk about some works in progress, a little bit of blanket progress. Um, I'm also going to talk about a new cast on and some possibly upcoming new cast ons. I've got quite a bit of yarny goodness to share. Um, I'm going to have a little chat about um, my plans with the YouTube channel and then also I'm going to finish off with a little shop news section at the end. So yeah, I hope you've got a nice drink and some crafting and you're able to settle down for a little bit and join me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Right, announcements. I do have some prize winners. Um, so I have an ongoing Giddy Yarns make along which we run continuously and I draw prizes every quarter. So obviously the end of March was two weeks ago and so as a result I have some prize winners to announce. I went into the um, threads this morning so you can enter it on Instagram, Ravelry and on Mighty Networks. All the info for how to enter um, is listed underneath the video as well as details and any rules. It's quite loose but details and any rules are there as well. So basically there were 47 entries in total and I went with Instagram first, then Ravelry, then Mighty Networks for a change. Um, and I used a random number generator to draw prizes or to draw numbers from what, between 1 and 47. Um, and we have two winners, so the first one was post number 13 or entry number 13 which was an Instagram entry um, and that was um, Nikki, Nikki Ulat. that's always how I pronounce your name in my head, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right or not, um, but um, you knit a lovely hat out of my poisoned apple colourway and I am not a red fan and um, I have struggled with my poisoned apple colourway because it's not my favourite colourway. Um, but seeing your hat held with mohair is the first time I've looked at that colourway and gone, oh, that's actually quite a pretty colourway and almost wanted to knit something for myself in it. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, and then entry number two, or win winner number two, was entry number 44, which was a Mighty Networks entry. And that was Fiona, Fiona Angus. And you knit a gorgeous hat, um, a gather hat by Tin Can Knits out of my Golden Jubilee colourway. So congratulations. Um, if you get in touch with me, what I do prize-wise for the Giddy Yarns Make Along is basically you can choose um, a either a skein of yarn from the shop or if, you, if the colourway you want isn't in stock, I'll dye it up for you, basically, as long as it's one that I can dye up for you. We'll work it out. <laughs> get in touch. Um, drop me a message on Instagram or Facebook or any of the places where you can drop me messages, they'll, again, there'll be links down below. In fact, I know that both of you I've been in touch with previously, so you know how to get into touch with me anyway, so um, that's not overly complicated. <laughs> um, so yeah, congratulations, and the next prize draw for the Giddy Yarns Make Along will be April, May, will be the end of June. Um, so don't forget, if you are knitting anything with Giddy Yarns, anything that uses at least 50% of my yarn, then um, enter it in to the make along because you could win more of my yarn. <laughs> um, yeah, right. I'm so out of practice, aren't I? But oh well. Um, I have finished objects to share, so let's move on to finished objects. Um, the elephant in the room is the finished object that I'm obviously wearing. I finished my armour sweater. This is a pattern by Maddie Harvey um, and it is knit in DK yarn. I used my own yarn so I used uh, my Deep in the Woods colourway which is the dark green and then I used my Granny Smith colourway which is the um, 
contrast colour in both sections. Um, I will stand up for you. I am wearing it with leggings and I'm also wearing it with um, a top that clearly doesn't go with it <laughs> at all. Um, basically, it needs to be worn over a dress really and I don't have any plain simple dresses that it would work with. I do have a couple that I ordered and they should be arriving in the post this week. Um, but I'm obviously not wearing it with anything appropriate today. So um, here it is though, in all its glory. Um, I am really, really pleased with it. I finished it just in time for East Anglia and I took it with me. However, I didn't really wear it over East Anglia weekend because I took with me a pair of high-waisted jeans and a high-waisted skirt, but they kind of finished here. And as you can see, it's, it is quite cropped. Um, so it did sit a little bit high with my jeans and I wasn't overly comfortable wearing it but I can see how over a dress it would work quite well. I'm wearing as I said leggings and a long sleeve t-shirt but the long sleeve t-shirt is actually quite long <laughs> so I can kind of see how it would look quite nice over a dress. Um, but yeah I'm really really pleased with it. Um, it fits really nicely. I love the sleeves. I made they're actually quite nice and wide, which I like. I don't really like a tight sleeve on a jumper. Um, and yeah, it's I'm really happy with it. A few details I really like. Um, the string of pearls detail around the neckline is really fun. It's really different. Um, it's really simple to knit actually, don't look at it and think it's really daunting because it isn't. Um, it works really really well with the raglan sh shaping, it's so simple, it's basically, um, it, it incorporates yarn overs so there's no kind of complicated make ones or anything like that in the raglan shaping um, and it works so easily with the string of pearls. Um, I like that you add the contrast bit at the border, so this is the same colour, the contrast that you use for the string of pearls is the same colour as the contrast for the border at the bottom. One detail I really like is the bottom border. I really like how she gets you to do this kind of twisted rib with the little um, extra bit, so you get like this kind of little rolled hem, but it's such a pretty detail. Um, and it's the same at the end of the sleeve. One thing I did change is the pattern is written for longer sleeves um, and then you put a chunk of the contrast on the end of the sleeve. I didn't do that because I actually used three skeins of DK and one skein of the contrast for this um, and I didn't want to have to dye myself up, specifically dye myself up an extra skein of the contrast just to do the ends and I'd, already, or I'd always planned it to be short sleeved. Um, so actually having that little bit of contrast on the sheet sleeves wasn't worth me dyeing up more of the yarn for. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. The pattern was really easy to follow, really simple, and um, I'm really glad to have it finished. Hopefully soon I will have something that I can wear it with that looks more sensible than what I was trying to wear it with before. Um, but yeah, a good... A good jumper finished means I have no garments on the needles, um, but I do have plans for a couple of garments. Yeah, I will talk about them a little bit later on. <laughs> Ugh, my, key, my tea is definitely cold. Um, right, I do have another finished object. Um, I finished my um, witcher socks. Um, so these have been on the needles for absolutely ages. I started these sometime in 2021, I think. Um, and um, they are, the yarn is um, Toss a Coin to Your Witcher from um, Debbie at Down Sheepy Lane. Um, it's absolutely stunning. I love the colours that she put together for these stripes. They're so different, such a different combination of colours, but I really, really like them. Um, and I got one of her 70 gram sock sets, so it was 50 grams of the main colour and 20 gram contrast um, for the heels, toes and cuffs. Um, I've got size 6 feet, um, size 6 UK feet obviously, um, and yeah, I comfortably got a decent length of sock out of it. I have to be a bit careful with yarn management, um, but it is absolutely possible to do. Um, so there we go. And obviously, as you saw, there is the second one there. I just only put one on the sock blocker because, yeah. 
there's not a lot to say about them really is it it's a pair of socks I finished a pair of vanilla socks um I did what do I do what did I do I did a two by two rib I'm really lazy with my rib so I do 68 stitches for my leg um and I'm always really lazy with my rib and I do a two by two rib but um you'll see basically because of the number of stitches I should start the second needle with two purls but I never do because it's easier to start a row with two knit stitches which means that I do get on either side of my rib I do get a section where there are four knit stitches in a row together but it doesn't bother me I do it every time <laughs> um and what else do I do um I do a German short row heel um, the one that I do is the one that is in a lot of um, Mina Philip Knitting Expat's earlier patterns. Um, definitely the one from her any of her New York sock collection socks before she introduced the mini heel flap adjustment. Um, but that's just the one I've stuck with because it's the one I know how to knit without thinking about it. And then I do, I don't know what toe I do. Do I do a wedged toe? I think I do a wedged toe. I'm not 100% sure. Um, basically, you do your decreases every other row for eight, for like, uh, so every other row until you've done like eight decreases, and then you decrease every row until you get down to eight stitches on each needle, and then you Kitchener it. Something like that, I think. I have a feeling it's from probably from um, some of the um, Helen Stewart patterns, not. I don't know, I've not done any of the more recent ones, but certainly I have a feeling that it's probably a toe from some of the Helen Stewart pans because I think they were some of the first ones that I knit and I'm not sure. But again, it's just the toe that I do regularly because it's the one I know and the one I'm comfortable with. Right, talking of socks, I have another sock to share with you as a finished object, um, but this is my uh, from the February clubs and I know that there are a few international customers who may not have received their February their February clubs yet um, anyone who ordered the February the January February March to be sent in one package although they shipped at the end of March this should be with you but I know some far afield places take a bit longer so if yours haven't arrived yet and you don't want to be spoiled by them at all then um, just skip to the timestamp that I put on the screen now and you won't get spoiled um, so hopefully you've gone not all of you just just a fair few of you who don't want to see the clubs um, so this is um, February's Beatrix Potter Club um, February was inspired by the tale of Squirrel Nutkin, um, so it is just gorgeous kind of um, oranges and russets and browns. I'm so happy with how this one came out, really really pleased with how this one came out. Um, it's not my colours that I gravitate towards, I am not a brown or orange person. In fact reds, orange, yellows, browns, that kind of whole colour spectrum are not my favourite colours at all. Um, so I find dyeing them quite interesting because I always look at it and I'm like, mm. um, even though I know like <laughs> a lot of people will look at it and be like, oh, I love those colours. My husband in particular, he loves kind of browns and oranges and stuff. So he's completely enamoured by this colourway. Um, and I don't look at it and think it's horrible. I look at it and it, it's lovely, but it's not purple or teal or turquoise or pink, which are kind of more of my colours. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I have a shorty sock. Um, so you, I've got um, January's Beatrix Potter one was the tale of Peter Rabbit and then we've got February's which is the tale of Squirrel Nutkin and I've not yet cast on March's but I'm hoping to get that done by the end of April so that I can share a reveal of that one as well. Um, I'm just going to knit myself a single, a single shorty sock, that's my plan. And then um, at the end of the year, I should in theory have 12 single shorty socks that I can wear as kind of mix and match odd pairs um, because I think that will be quite fun. Um, and nothing else different about these. When I knit my shorty socks, um, what I do is I think I do, I've actually got it written on my phone. That might be the easier way to look at it, mightn't it? I do, what do I do? I do 12 rows of two by two rib. I then do 10 rows, just straight rows, because I do a short row heel rather than a heel flap and gusset, you need a little bit of extra room in the leg. 
um, before you put the heel in. Um, I've knit patterns before where you use a heel flap and gusset and actually you can go straight from the rib into the heel flap um, but I find that with a short row heel I need a bit extra room otherwise the rib fits a little bit too low and disappears in under my shoe. Um, so yeah I do 12 rows of rib, I then do 10 rows of just plain knitting for the leg, I then put my short row heel in. I find I have to do a longer foot so I would normally do um, 65, yeah, I would normally do 65 rows for my foot, but I find with a shorty sock, I need to do 75. And I think that's just because you, with a shorty sock, you really don't want the heel coming under. Um, whereas with a longer sock, you can kind of hike them up a bit more. So you get a bit more tension in the foot. Um, and they tend to fit better. Whereas with a shorty sock, you can't pull them up as much. So I need that little bit of extra room so that the heel sits properly. Um, at least that's kind of why I think I need it. Um, and then just my standard um, toe that I talked about a minute ago. Um, with this pair of socks, I do have a different base for the toe. I didn't have enough Merino nylon minis to save myself a Merino nylon mini. So I've got one of the BFL nylon minis. Um, but in some ways that's quite good because that will reinforce the toe and the heel. Not that I have any problem. I don't have any problems with my heels disappearing in socks. You know, people wear through heels in socks. I wear my hand knit socks a lot. I have still got the first pairs of hand knit socks that I knit like five years ago and they are still fine. They still don't have heel holes in the heels or the toes, which in some ways frustrates me because I'm like, I don't know what to do with them. I don't really wear them anymore because I've got lots of nice new hand knit socks, but they're not wearing out. So I feel like I can't get rid of them because they're not wearing out. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, that is the Beatrix Potter Club. I've also got the um, Middle Earth Minis Club. I've crocheted up the squares for um, February for that as well. So I shared the January squares before. Um, so January was, oh, this is a test of my memory, isn't it? January was um, A Feast for Trolls, um, Gandalf the Grey, um, the Shire, Bilbo, and Thorin Oakenshield. And then I've also done the February ones as well. So we've got um, Elrond and the Moon Runes, um, Mirkwood, uh, Barrel Rides, um, What's It Got in Its Pockets Is, and um, Bjorn the Shape Changer. Um, so those are there. I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to make a blanket, definitely, and I think I'm going to have to, it's really annoying, I'm going to have to do like six, ten rows of six, because um, I will have 20, I'll have 60 squares in total at the end of the year, and I'm going to, so I'm going to have to do ten rows of six to make it a decently sized blanket, but annoyingly that means I have to mix the, mix the months up a little bit but that's fine. But what I can't decide is whether I'm just going to join them straight, join them one to each other, or whether I want to border them and then join them. Part of me just wants to join them together and just make it so it all kind of blends into each other. I quite like that idea and I've never done that with a blanket before. Um, so I, that might be what I do, in which case I could maybe start joining them soonish. I've got March's um, minis all skeined up ready to go, but I haven't started crocheting them up yet. Well, come back to anyone that hid <laughs> for all the club reveals. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, do I have any other finished objects to share with you? I don't. I think that's it. But that's not bad going, is it, really? So in that case, we will move on to some works in progress. So I've got two works in progresses to share with you. One of them um, you haven't seen for a while and I've not worked on for a while, but I did put a little bit of extra progress on it over the last month. So I thought I would get them back out and share them with you. And that is my Yuletide socks. Um, oh, if I can get them out of the needle case, here we go. Um, so this is a pattern by um, Suzanne Green, Green Lambkin Yarns um, and it is the Yuletide socks pattern um, which needs me really to stick my hand in it so you can see the pattern more clearly. It's a beautiful lace and cable 
um, pattern. It's kind of a fake cable, a faux cable though. You don't need to use any cable needles or anything. It's really, really simple. Um, I'm knitting it out of the yarn that I dyed when I went to the Lay Family Yarn Retreat, um, which I really, really love. I'm so happy with this colourway. Um, really pretty. Um, and nice for it to be a colourway that I just dyed for me and for nobody else, which was quite fun. Um, I paired it with just a random um, mini skein. This is, um, oh, there, I, I think it will at some point come into something. I have a massive box of random individual 20 gram mini skeins in just solid colours that are perfect for contrasts for socks. And really, I need to get my act together and I need to photograph them and I need to list them on the website, but it seems at the moment like a massively daunting task. So they tend to just come to shows with me um, in case people want contrasting colours at shows. Um, and then I don't do anything else with them. They just sit there. So at some point I need to kind of go through the box and get photos and get them listed on the website so that um, 20 gram contrast minis are available for people to buy individually. But I haven't got my act together about that yet. <laughs> Is that something people would buy? If I had them available on the website and you could just choose your contrast mini, would you buy individual 20 gram minis? Do, do, do people do that? I don't know. Anyway, I made some progress. The last time I think I shared this with you on the podcast, I was just here. I'd just put the heel in. Um, so I've got a couple of inches done on the foot. Um, this is still the first sock, so it's got a long way to go, but it is, a, it is a, it's a heavily patterned sock, so it will take me longer because I can't sit and do this while I'm reading. I need to be able to actually concentrate while I'm doing it. Um, so it doesn't get reached for as often. But I do love the pattern and I definitely want the socks finished. And I also want to cast on some more pattern socks. So I need to finish these really before I cast on more pattern socks. The one thing I have been working on, and I've mostly been working on it this last week or so, actually, and I'm so, so close to finishing it. I'm kind of frustrated I didn't finish it in time for this episode. But then even if I had finished it in time for this episode, I wouldn't have had time to block it and do all the finishing touches. So it's probably better. I've just found um, Cadbury's cream eggs, mini Cadbury's cream eggs. <laughs> you can tell I was working on it yesterday. Um, I wouldn't have had time to get the finishing touches done so um, in some ways it's probably good that it will be on the next it will be a finished object for the next episode but that is of course really tangled up my cupid's arrow wrap so this is my advent project from 2020 i believe <laughs> um and um yeah it, it has taken me it's taken me a while, but I'm nearly finished. I might have to stand up to show you this. Um, it's a bit twisted. Um, the last time I recorded, I think that's the wrong side. I was where that stitch marker is, just there. Um, so I've added a good chunk, whoops. I've added a good chunk since then. And I do love this. I'm really, really pleased with it. And the more I've got through the colours, the, the happier I am with it. Um, I know when I kind of got to this point, I was a little bit like, mm, I'm not 100% sure about this. I'm not, I'm not sure about the colours and um, my ordering of the colours. But actually, as I've gone into the yellows and the greens to the blues, I am really pleased with it. It's going to be a really good size to wear. Um, all the ends I need to do all the ends um and yeah I'm so so close to finishing it um the cupid's arrow wrap is um excuse the needles banging all over the tables the cupid's arrows oh my goodness words the cupid arrow wrap <laughs> is a pattern by Ellie of craft house magic I have changed the pattern basically um, instead of including the lace sections, I've just done the garter stitch section all the way through. Um, so mine is entirely garter stitch, um, just with the little colour transition sections in between, um, which I'm really glad about. I, I really like it as just garter stitch. I'll get a, wet, a lot more wear out of it and it's meant that it's been a much more relaxing knit because I've not had to worry about the lace sections. Um, I, this has also been a simple enough knit that I can read while I'm knitting, which has been really nice. 
Um, and yeah, I'm all of about 10 rows, I think. One, two, three, so four of those. I've got four garter ridges. I need nine garter ridges. Um, so that's five more garter ridges, which is what, another 10 rows um, before the bind off. The pattern suggests doing tassels, which I am kind of tempted to do, but I need to, I think what I need to do is have a little look at the ends. And what I'm thinking is I might just do one tassel on that point and then a tassel on each of these points um, rather than doing kind of tassels all the way down. So I'm thinking maybe three tassels and I'm thinking I might do the one at this point, I will take kind of um, the oranges and pinks, I think. So maybe the first half of the advent calendar, this kind of half of the advent calendar, I will take a little bit of each of those yarns to create a multicolored tassel. And then the other end, I will take kind of this half of the advent calendar and do the same. So the tassels kind of coordinate with the end of the shawl, the, their ends of the shawl. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do um, with that. Um, so we'll see. I mean, whether I will get all of these ends woven in by the next episode as well as finish it, hopefully I'd like to get this finished because it would be a big project off the needles and it would give me some chance to cast on something new. Um, maybe start something with my advent calendars from 2021, which would be really nice considering I have already purchased an advent calendar for 2022 and agreed to swap with three other people for advent calendars as well. And there's still one that I really want to buy. Yeah, I need to go on with some advent knits to justify buying more advent calendars, don't I? <laughs> so yeah, that is my Cupid's Arrow wrap. Did I talk about the yarn? Ugh, I've got fluff in my mouth. Did I talk about the yarn? I don't think I did. The yarn is, I'm gonna open this out again one more time. If I can show you the right side, not the wrong side. Sorry about the needles crashing everywhere. Um, the yarn is from um, the Spectrum Fibre 2020 Advent Calendar. Um, and it is gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. I particularly enjoyed working with these two colours here. Um, they were two of my favourites to knit with. Um, and yeah, it is, it is a stunning Advent Calendar. Um, I reordered it. She didn't have this one in a fade. I reordered it to make it a bit more of a fade for my shawl. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to be really happy with the finished result. Oh, needles and things crashing everywhere. This is a noisy episode. Um, at least the fact that I had to re-record re the first half of the 20 minutes. The first 20 minutes? I don't know what I'm saying. At least the fact that I had to re-record the first 20 minutes means that you're no longer having to listen to next door mowing their lawn. Um, Cause that was annoying at the beginning. <laughs> right, that was works in progress. Okay, so the next thing I've got to talk to you about is some new cast-ons. Now only one of them has actually been cast on um, and that is um, Tom's March sock. So if you've been watching for a while, you'll know that this year, as part of my shop, I'm doing a colour of the month each month, inspired by um, inspired by digital art images from the Wombo Dream Art app, which is basically an artificial intelligence app where you put in a keyword and it and pick a pick a style of art and it creates an art image based off that keyword. Um, so March's image was this. Um, and I dyed up the yarn and it just took me ages to get Tom's sock cast on. So you've not actually seen it knit up on the podcast yet. Um, but this is the March colorway. Um, I love how this is knit up. I think knit up, it reminds me more of the um, image than it did in the skein. Um, but I'm so pleased with it. I've just, I finished the leg of this one. Um, you can see it in the cake as well. There we go. Um, I finished the leg of this one, but I need to put the heel in. Um, I've got one of my hairs on there. Um, so yeah, that is Tom's March sock, which hopefully I will get the heel put in um, this week sometime and start working my way down the foot. I do have somewhere 
the um, April colour. This is the April colourway. Um, there we go. That is the April colourway. Um, I did a test run this week and um, that is the April colourway and the April image I will pop up there as well. Um, I'll talk about it more in the next episode because I'll have skeins of yarn to show you and I'll probably talk about it more in shop news. Um, but yeah, the April colourway will be coming to the shop at the end of April. Um, hopefully I will get that cast on um, so that I can show you how it knits up when I'm knitting Tom's sock with it. It's a very good job I have a husband who doesn't mind bright fuchsia pink, isn't it? Um, so that is one new cast on that you've not seen yet. The other two things are kind of preliminary cast ons. So basically, I've swatched one of them <laughs> and I haven't cast on the other one yet at all. But I am knitting, I've, there's two garments that I really want to knit. So the first one is the Mama cardigan. I'll pop a picture up actually because it's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so it's the Mama cardigan by, oh, I don't know who it's by. Have I printed it, the printed enough of the pattern to get who it's by on the pattern? Oh, Pip and Pin. It's by Pip and Pin. Um, it's a, it is a, it's a cardigan, obviously. Um, and it features a honeycomb brioche stitch, which is what makes that kind of textured effect on the kind of the front and the back of the cardigan. I was a little bit scared when I decided this was what I was going to make, that the brioche was going to be overly complicated. But because it's one colour brioche worked flat, it's actually really, really simple. Um, you basically have one row where you're just doing, um, like slipping one and doing a yarn over, and then on the other row you're knitting those two together. Um, so it, it isn't going to be as daunting as I first thought it was. Um, I've got the yarn all caked up for it, although I might need more than the three skeins that I've got in there, but it's fine. I'm dyeing it, I'm dyeing it, I'm knitting it in my yarn, um, so I can um, always dye more up if I need to, which is always quite handy. What have I got on there? Oh, I think it's just where the pin's gone through. Um, so here's my swatch. <laughs> Let's start with that, shall we? This is my swatch. Let's see if I can hold it up so that you can actually see. Um, if the camera, there we go. So this is my little swatch. Um, I swatched in both the um, honeycomb stitch and in stocking stitch. Now this did come up um, far too big. Um, I went up a needle size because I'm usually quite a tight knitter, but actually I don't think I needed to go up that needle size at all because I'm definitely, this is coming up far too big with my gauge. Um, but I'm going to be a lazy knitter and I'm not going to swatch again. I'm just gonna do the, the, just go down the half needle size um, and go for what's recommended in the pattern. I'm so far out gauge wise that um, I think I was something like 10 stitches um, out across the four inches. So basically I had 10 less stitches um, across the four inches. Um, so it would have come up a lot bigger. Um, so I figure if I just go down that half needle size, even if I don't quite lose all 10 of those stitches, I'm still gonna, it's gonna come up a little bit big rather than a little bit small, which will be fine as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, I think that's my plan, but I really like, this is the honeycomb, see if I can, this is the honeycomb stitch, um, the honeycomb brioche, which is really, really effective. It's such a pretty pattern. Um, and I'm using my, this is my Through the Woods, no, Through the Wardrobe colourway, um, which is part of my, oh, I wish I could hold it still. Come on, hold it still, Helen. This is my Through the Wardrobe colourway, which is part of my Narnia collection. And I'm really loving how it knits up. Um, there we go, here it is in the cake. Um, I really love how it knits up. So I'm really looking forward to having a garment in this colourway. It's going to take me forever. I know it is. It's a fingering weight garment. Um, it's got a slightly complicated stitch, so I'm going to need to pay attention when I'm knitting it. But it's fine. It's fine. This collection is sticking around. There's no rush. You know, maybe I'll have it finished for October for Glasgow. We'll see. But um, yeah, that is my next potential cast on. Um, I just need to sort the needles out and then I can actually get this cast on. And then the other garment I've been looking at casting on is the Aquamarlene sweater. Again, I'll pop a little picture up so you can see it. 
I'm just double checking. Have I got the... Oh, I don't think I've got the pattern here. I shall have to double check quickly who the pattern is by. Um, hang on. Give me two seconds. Um, so this is... It's a really interesting pattern. Um, you hold... It's designed to be super scrappy. Um, so it is by Park Williams. Can I actually just click onto the pattern? There we go. Yeah, by Park Williams, Park and Knit. Um, and it's designed to be super scrappy. So it's designed um, to use loads and loads of scraps of yarn and you hold multiple weights of yarn together. So it's knit in a bulky weight, um, but you accomplish that bulky weight by holding together different strands. And it gives you in the pattern, like you could hold together four strands of fingering weight. You could hold together one strand of worsted and something else or you could hold together a strand of DK and two strands of four ply um, and that's what I'm gonna do so but I'm doing mine less scrappy and more like a fade I won't do it as cropped as it is in the picture um, I tried on a friend of mine who's got one Laura um, she came round for a games night the other week and I tried hers on and I really really liked it I love the sleeves I need things that are more long sleeved and when I first looked at the pattern I was like oh I'm not sure how I feel about that but having seen it on Laura and having tried it on it is super comfy it is super cozy I love those sleeves on um, so yeah I won't do it as cropped as it is in the pattern um, but that's fine it's knit it's knit from the bottom up so you start at the waistband and you knit up and then you knit the sleeves and then you join it all at the underarms and then finish knitting the body which is a construction that I've never done before so that will be really interesting um, and what I'm planning to do is I want to knit it as kind of a fade so I am going to use, um, I dyed up some of my Dusk colourway on DK, um, which is this colour here. Um, so I've dyed up some of this colourway on DK and I'm going to hold that with these four skeins of yarn. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm going to start with um, the DK held with two strands of this one. So this is Beehive Yarns in the Rose Lichen colourway. Um, and then I'm going to fade into doing, holding it with two strands of this one, which is Spectrum Fibres in the Love Hearts colourway. And then I'm going to do the same. So then it's going to be two strands of this one, which is Hedgerow Yarns in the Lupins colourway. And then finally, I will finish off with two strands of this one, which is West Green Loft Yarns um, in, the, in the City colourway. I have a feeling that this one is an MCN, a high twist MCN, but it doesn't actually tell me on the label. Um, but that will be fine. Um, although I should probably check that because it won't wash. I'll have to be more careful when I wash it. It might felt. We'll see. I might change this one out. We might see, or I might add a different colour in. Now I've thought about the fact that I have a feeling that this is an MCN. I'd rather go without an MCN so that actually I could wash it like I normally wash most of my hand knits and not worry about the top part felting potentially. Yeah, maybe we'll swap this one out. I'm sure I've got another, I'm sure I've got another skein of pink yarn that can fit in here somewhere. But yeah, the idea is that I'm going to hold two strands of um, one yarn with a strand of the DK to make a kind and then kind of fade it through. I might do something in the middle, like in between the colours where I hold one strand of each for a few rows. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. I'm going to just see how it goes. I am planning, if I remember rightly, the um, Find Your Fade sweater, which I have knit before, had a um, formula in it for working out how long you needed to knit each section um, depending on the length you wanted. So basically it had a formula whereby you worked out how long you want your garment, so from neckline to hemline, how long you want your garment, and you work out how many colours you want to use, and then it gave you, it, there was a formula, you input those numbers and it told you kind of how much you needed to knit of each colour, and then to then do the transitions um, and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to go back and use that formula um, and hopefully that should work to kind of give me an idea for how long I need to knit each section for the fade to work. 
Um, but yeah, I need to I need to rethink this colour, I think. Yeah, or potentially just do it in the three colours. I'm just wondering whether I'll have enough yarn to do that. I'm not sure I will, and then do long sleeves as well. I think I'll probably need to put another skein of yarn in there. Um, yeah, possibly. We'll see. Um, it's what, the one thing with the pattern is that because it's designed to be knit with scraps and stuff like that, it gives you kind of an overall amount of yarn that you'll they think they they say you'll roughly need, but you don't get like a specific yardage for each colour um, and stuff like that. So I would imagine I will need four skeins of each. It's, yeah, I'd imagine I'm going to need four skeins of each potentially. Um, so we will see. We will see what I decide to do, but. I can't cake it up because my um, ball winder broke and I ordered a new board, ball winder um, from Amazon which is not ideal but I needed something quick to arrive quickly because I'm supposed to be spending today and this week um, skeining up yarn, uh, as caking up yarn ready to start warping for um, my next lot of stripes. Um, so that arrived from Amazon nice and quickly. It arrived yesterday, no problems at all. I opened it, I went to use it and it was broken before I even used it. Um, it kind of looked like it had been used. It had scratches on the body of it and one of the little bits that rests against the table was broken off. Um, so yeah, I've had to return that and I've ordered another one from Wool Warehouse this time, but obviously with it being a bank holiday today, it's probably not gonna ship until tomorrow at the earliest, which means it's not gonna be here until Wednesday or Thursday, which has um, put plans my plans for the week back significantly and it also means I can't cast this jumper on because I can't take up the yarn and I'm not sitting and hand winding. I do enough hand winding as it is. I am not sitting and hand winding yarn. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all of that. All of that to say this will be cast on at some point. I might go up and rethink that colourway this afternoon. We will see. Um, so yeah, there we go. Right, the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of yarny goodness. But before I do yarny goodness, blanket progress. Um, yeah, I've, I've got, my, my show notes this week have got arrows all over the place because I kept forgetting to put things in. Blanket progress, I have made, this is gonna be crinkly, I have made some progress on my colour therapy blanket. So I have finished my, sixth block um which is this one here which was the teal and turquoise block which i think was june's month from last year so we have got we have got the first one the pink block then the red block then the orange block then the yellow block then the green block and then the teal and turquoise block and I am now moving on. I've not cast it on yet, but I've got it all ready to go. I am now moving on to the blue block, which is those colours there. Um, and I, it leads in nicely to yarny goodness because one of the things that did arrive this month um, is the first quarter of year two from Erin. Um, Where's that one gone? There. So this 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 bag, um, this bag. Well, you've not seen this bag before. This bag is a lovely massive bucket bag from Gem at the Little Grey Girl. She very kindly gifted me this. Um, I love the denim. It's massive. Um, it's got all of the minis from the Color Therapy Club in there. So all of the remaining um, ones from Year One. And then I ordered, I've ordered year two because I want to create a blanket, but 12 blocks is not going to be big enough for a usable blanket. So I thought, actually, that's perfect if Erin's running a year two because I can get year two and I can create duplicate blocks um, and create a bigger blanket with 24 blocks instead of 12 blocks. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, so the quarter two ones arrived so I've got the um January is the pink ones then February are the red ones and then March are orange um I love this club so much it's so much fun I love these little bobbins 
Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with all of the little yet leftover scraps, um, but I think they're probably all going to go into um, a magic knot ball at some point. I have been saving because each month with it you get 10 bobbins and I'm obviously only using nine for the um for the blocks so each month I have been saving one of the 10 gram bobbins in a solid color um and I'm going to make myself a pair of rainbow socks using those um but I need to wait until I've got all 12 in there. So once I finish the first 12 blocks, that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll probably do the same actually with um, the year two. I'll probably keep aside one of the bobbins until I've got 12 and then I'll do a pair of rainbow socks with those when they're all finished as well. So yeah, a little bit of progress on my colour therapy club, which is good. I definitely want to carry on with the next block of that one. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit of yarny goodness, which leads us into more yarny goodness. Now, obviously, I there's been a month and I have been to East Anglia Yarn Festival as well during that month. Um, so I have a few bits to share with you. I'm going to just grab them out of the paper bag because otherwise they're going to make lots of noise. Um, some of them are yarn, some of them are not yarn. Some of them I've just looked at and gone, oh, I forgot I got that. Um, basically, I shoved them in, they've been in the bag, I got a little bag from Vicky Brown Designs um, and just put all the yarn in those um, and then I've not done anything, they've been sat on a shelf waiting for me to be able to get round to podcasting. <laughs> so I've done nothing with any of the things that came back to me from me, came back with me from East Anglia. Um, right, I'm going to start with a couple of bags. So. Again, these were very kindly gifted to me um, from Gem. This one actually, I don't know if you've seen this one. This one came with me from Unravel when I went to help her at Unravel, but I think I just put it away because I was gonna use it at East Anglia because Gem was on the stall next to me and I quite like to knit on my stall and often if she's on the stall next to me, I will make sure that I'm knitting from one of her pyramid bags because they are perfect to just keep on your wrist and knit away while I'm standing and chatting and stuff like that. Um, and obviously it's always better if I'm using a pyramid bag in a fabric that she has on the stool. So she does have these amazing space bags. Um, I'd imagine they're in stock on her website. Um, and then I had to pick up one of these, which is um, her brand new fabric that she launched for East Anglia. Um, I got it in the TARDIS small, which is one of my favorite sizes of hers. Um, but yeah, it's in the TARDIS fabric, uh, not the TARDIS fabric, no, nah. it's in the, I don't even know what this plant is, it's really pretty, this fabric is just gorgeous, it's, it's completely my colours 100%, um, so I can now use that, now I've shown you, which is great. Um, what else did I get? Oh, I grabbed these, which I need to go through and put on my project bags at some point, um, I will do that, I think I might do that in a vlog at some point. But I picked these up, which Gem has started doing, and I think they're such a brilliant idea. These are available on her website. So they're little tags. Um, that's upside down. <laughs> there we go. They are little tags. I'm gonna open one. Um, and they are reusable. So they're removable tags. On one side, you've got an, a product item. So in this case, you've got socks. Oh, my camera's not going to focus. And then on the other side, you've just got Gem's logo. Um, and they are those type of ones that you just open up and you can just pop it on. Is this? Hang on. What's in this bag? Yeah, that sucks. That's good. And then you can just pop it on your project bag. Um, and they clip really nicely just into the zip. Here we go. So now, when I'm reaching for my projects and I'm not sure what's in them, I've got a little tag on there that tells me that this bag has socks in. <laughs> um, so they're really handy. So I picked up a socks one that you've just seen. I put, in fact, actually I picked up two socks ones because often I have a couple of pairs of socks on the go. I picked up a shawl one and I picked up a crochet one. Although I probably will look at, I probably, I, I, want, I want loads more. Um, I can imagine these being one of those things you need quite a few of because if you've got lots of projects, but they're really handy for 
yeah, just popping onto project bags. Isn't that such a good idea to kind of mark out what your project bags are and what's in them without having to open every single bag? If you're like me and you have lots of project bags, definitely useful. I also picked up a couple of um, stitch markers. So I couldn't resist um, a dragon from Hannah at Corner of Craft. This has got really <laughs> scratched up, this card. This card was in my suitcase at one point and it was in my handbag at one point and the card is looking a little bit worse for wear because it's had stuff rubbing all over it but the, the dragon is still perfectly happy and perfectly intact so I couldn't resist a little dragon from Hannah. Um, Hannah is also vending at the Wool Monty so I'm definitely eyeing up some more of her stitch markers for the Wool Monty. Um, and then I picked up two from Laura at um, The Lonely Knitter slash Bumbling Yarns. Um, I picked up this lovely little, um, this cute little piggy. Um, she had some gorgeous polymer clay stitch markers. So I've got this fun little pig and then this amazing strawberry cupcake. If my camera, there we go. This amazing strawberry cupcake as well. Oh, come on camera. There we go. Um, so I couldn't resist those. I'm not, they need to get into use. So I'm glad I've showed them to you so that they can actually get put into use. And then I have some yarn to show. So I, I only bought one skein of yarn at East Anglia and then I swapped for a couple as well. Um, and then one is actually a club yarn that arrived um, that arrived in March. <laughs> so I will start with the club yarn. So as you'll know, if you've been watching regularly, I signed up to Hannah of um, the Corner of Craft and Chromatic Yarns, her um, Knitical Roll Yarn Club. Um, we have become over the last year or so quite big fans of um, Critical Roll, which is a um, a and d kind of it's really hard to explain. Basically a group of voice actors who are amazing um, get together every week and they play a game of D&D &D and they record it and you can watch it. Um, so we've become br brilliant fans of that. It's like the pinnacle of D&D &D, basically. It's like what every group wishes they could be but is almost impossible to reach without the time and experience and energy and amazingness that the group of nitical, uh, critical role team have. Anyway, Hannah has been dyeing up based on campaign three, which is the current campaign. She's been dyeing up yarns inspired by that as part of her nitical role yarn club. So this is um, March's colorway, which is called Maud, which is a reference to um, one of the characters. It's a reference to, oh, my brain's gone. Laura's character, Imogen. It's a reference to Imogen. Um, and it's absolutely stunning, this colourway. Really is absolutely beautiful. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these at all, um, but they will definitely be going into projects. It's windy in the garden, and my mum and dad got um, sack race sets for the boys when they came up, so basically great big sack thingies with handles on. Um, and the boys have left them out in the garden and one of them just filled with air and like walked across the garden. <laughs> I don't know how to explain what I just saw, but it was very distracting. Um, so yeah, I don't know quite what I'm going to do with these. I'm wondering actually whether the January one might work well in the faded jumper that I'm thinking of doing um, instead of that lighter colour if I start darker with the January one. But I need to get it out and have a think. I also bought some yarn from Hannah at um, East Anglia. I bought a sock set of her Metagaming Pigeon colourway. This again is another critical role reference. Um, basically the idea that when one of them um, is not present during a role playing scene. So basically a couple of characters might have gone off to do something else and the rest of them aren't there. And then when one of the ones who isn't there technically um, starts interacting they call it the metagaming pigeon because anyway if you watch it you'll get the reference anyway I couldn't I couldn't resist her metagaming pigeon colorway and I got it as a set sock set so I've got the mini to go with it um and I got it on her yeah her merino sock um base um but that is gorgeous that's going to be a pair of socks for me at some point um and then I did a lovely swap with um 
Knit Me Sane. Um, and I originally went for this skein of yarn, which I just fell in love with, and I can't describe. It's called Pine Needles and Tinsel, um, and it's on a gold sparkle, and it's just beautiful. Um, I've not got decent lighting in here today to do it justice, but it is absolutely beautiful, and I just fell in love with it. Um, and then I also fell in love with this one called Sing It Louder. And again, that's just stunning, isn't it? It's just really bright and colourful and fun. So we did a swap. I had these two and um, she had some of my Narnia minis. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. I have no idea what they're gonna become. They're gonna live in my stash for a while until the perfect project appears. These might just become Christmas socks, to be honest. I don't know, but they're both stunning. So that is all of my yarny goodness. Um, my camera battery is now flashing at me and telling me it is low. Oh no, what else did I get? I have other things that weren't yarn. I bought a couple of patterns. Um, so Arthur was really upset about me going away for the weekend um, and I'd shown him this pattern from Sincerely Louise and said that I would pick up the pattern for him and then I would knit him one of these to go in his bedroom because Arthur has a rainbow themed bedroom. Um, so I'm going to do that at some point. I just got the patterns in the end because um, it actually tells you what yarn you need. Um, so I'm just going to use my own yarn. I'm going to do the DK version with four ply for the rainbow drops um, and he's going to have one of those. And then I also picked up just the pure rainbow as well because I thought that would be fun. So he might get both. And the pure rainbow um, works for DK, chunky or super chunky. Um, although of course it could work for smaller and you'll just have a smaller rainbow basically. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do those for the boys at some point in the future. And then the final thing I picked up, which I'll actually be really glad to be able to start wearing now, is a t-shirt from um, Stitches Tees. My brain went then. And I picked up the Yarnivore t-shirt um, because I couldn't resist. And I just really like them. Um, so yeah, I got the lovely mint green on navy. Um, so that can now go in my wardrobe to be worn. I went for a dark colour because I can dye yarn in it and not worry too much about spilling dye on myself and ruining my clothes. Okay, so typically my camera battery decided to die and I can't remember now where I was because it's now a lot later in the day. <laughs> I have packed up all of your amazing orders from the weekend. Um, that's what I've spent my day doing, basically. Um, I still need to put the postage stickers on them, but they're all, postage is all processed and they're all packed up in bags, ready to go. Um, but yeah, I thought I would let my camera have a good charge during the day so that I could sit down and finish off the podcast once the packing is done. Um, it is now about 10 to two. Um, I've just seen, I've got a message, is it anything important? No, it's not even a message. It's just WhatsApp checking for new messages. Um, it's now about 10 to two. So I've got, I've got, what? What time do I leave? Yeah, I've got an hour. I've got an hour before I need to go and get the boys. Um, so I thought I'd sit down and finish off the podcast. So um, all that I had left to say, I wanted to talk a little bit about my plans for my YouTube channel and what I'm changing and what I'm keeping the same and stuff like that. And then I've got a little bit of shop news to talk about. I'm conscious that this is gonna have been a really long episode. So if you're still sticking by me and you're still watching now, then you're amazing. Thank you, you're wonderful. Um, so my plans for the channel, obviously the weekly podcast or roughly weekly podcast is gonna stick around. I enjoy doing that. I fit it into my daily schedule or my weekly schedule quite nicely. It's quite nice actually on a Monday morning to have a day where I'm not dying yarn and I'm just sitting down and recording the podcast and then doing some other ad mini bits and pieces. So that's gonna stick. Um, I'm gonna try and keep up with the monthly roundups. I'm conscious that I obviously didn't have a monthly roundup in March, but what I'm gonna do is, and now I'm not sure whether I've already said this in the podcast, but if I did, we'll see. What I'm gonna do is combine March and April's together and make one big monthly roundup for March and April combined, because not a lot happened in March. I didn't read many books. I didn't get many things finished. I completely failed with all of my knitting goals and plans. So I think what we'll do is just do a big March and April combined at the end of April. And then vlog wise, I love doing the daily vlogs. I do really enjoy them, but I've been struggling a little bit. I think actually over the last year, 
I've been struggling a little bit with them because both the kids at sc are at school now so my days are a lot more um, work based and whereas I used to do extra things and other things in the daily vlogs I don't know I just feel like they're a bit samey all the time and particularly doing the weekend vlogs and I know I know a lot of you love them and a lot of you really enjoy them and um, you don't even you don't mind if it's boring and you don't find it boring because you're looking at somebody else's life and I can appreciate that because I enjoy watching other people's vlogs where they may not necessarily be doing anything at all um, but just from a motivating myself to record perspective I find it quite hard sometimes if I'm just having a normal work week I find it quite hard sometimes to record and make it feel interesting so that being said, I think that the weekly week vlogs might stop for a while. But what I'm planning on doing is I like the idea of doing like random daily vlogs throughout the month. So they could be different things. Like if we've got something going on at a weekend and I decide actually I'd quite like to vlog this like I did with the Glam's Castle vlog um, that I recorded while my parents were here. I think what would be nice is to be able to just go, oh, actually, I'm going to vlog this and that can be a, a vlog that goes up this month. Um, and then I can do like occasional ones that are based on specific crafting stuff. I can do ones that are occasionally based on my dye day if I'm dyeing anything in particular. Um, so it just gives me a bit more flexibility to dry something a little bit different. So I don't know whether I'm going to find a name for them. Part of me wants to call them kind of studio vlogs, but I know there's a lot of other YouTubers, um, certainly in the crafting world, that do kind of studio vlogs. So I'm not sure I want to go with the same name, but they might literally just go up as daily vlogs and I'll put the date and then I'll put kind of what they're about. So it might be, it'll go up as like Giddy Knits, daily vlog, April 23rd, and then it'll be like a dying vlog or trip to Glam's Castle or family day out or tackling my crafting corner I don't know but that's kind of what I'm thinking that's what I'm thinking something that doesn't need quite so much scheduling as the week in vlogs are and isn't as impacted by if I'm having a day die in clubs where I can't show you anything in colour anyway it doesn't matter um so that's the plan that's the plan going forward. I hope you stick with me and you still enjoy them and um, you completely understand that the changes and why, why life gets in the way. <laughs> um, anyway, last thing I wanted to talk about was a little bit of shop news. Um, I've put my notes away typically, so what I was gonna talk about, I can't quite remember. Um, I was definitely gonna share the new collection that's just launched. So. I launched a new collection for East Anglia and you would have seen it on Instagram if you follow me over on Instagram but I failed to share it at all really on social media. I can't even remember or on YouTube or vlogs or anything I can't even remember if I shared it in the um, the, the daily vlogs that I did do in March. I cannot, I cannot remember whether I shared it but I'm going to share it now. Um, so I launched the brand new Grimm's Fairy Tale collection. Um, if you've been with me over the last year, you will recognise that this is um, based off of my 2021 yarn club, my Once Upon a Yarn Club, uh, which was all inspired by Grimm's Fairy Tales. I picked five of my favourites and also five that I thought would go together nicely in a collection. Um, and hence the Grimm's Fairy Tale, the Grimm's Fairy Tale collection was launched. So... There are five colours in the collection. Um, they are all in the shop now. Um, so they're up in the shop on Merino Nylon on four ply, oh, sorry, on Merino Nylon four ply, on Merino DK, and I've also got mini bundles in the shop as well. They're also all available dyed to order. So if you want them dyed up on a different base, then you can get that in dyed to order. Um, the DK and the four ply are under the same listing. So if you go to the Merino Nylon section of my website, you'll see a listing. And if you go to the Merino DK section of my website, you will see a listing as well. You may notice in the Merino DK section that all the listings have 
um, four ply photos that's just because I can only pick one photo to be the cover photo but when you go into the listing there's a drop down box and you can see that there's an option to choose four ply or DK um, it's just the easiest way to make the listings but I have been tagging them so that you should find any colorway that has DK in stock should be in the DK section. Occasionally there might be rogue ones where it's out of stock and I've missed I've missed that I've sold out of that on DK but hopefully hopefully I've got it a bit under control. We'll see. Anyway five colorways so we have um, Little Red Riding Hood, we have um, Sleeping Beauty, this one is actually different to the um, original Sleeping Beauty colourway because the way I dyed the original one um, was a bit of a faff and when I came to re-dye the collection I looked at my notes and my recipe and I was like yeah I'm not doing that, that's gonna, that, 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 it's just not happening. Um, so I reformulated it and created a slightly different colourway to the original Sleeping Beauty colourway but I really love it and I think it goes nicely with the rest of the collection. Um, we also have um, Tom Thumb. This is one of my favourites. Look it matches my nails. Um, Tom, 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 Tom Tom. My husband Tom, not Tom Thumb, um, bought me a voucher back in October for um, a spa like spa treatments um so I finally used it yesterday and I went and had a manicure hence the nice nails and a massage um but yeah they match Tom Thumb um so yeah that is Tom Thumb I really like this one we have Elves and Shoemaker and then finally we have Rapunzel Um, and as I said, I've got them available in 20 gram mini sets as well, where you can get one of each of the colours from the collection. And because I was taking them to the yarn show, I've also got little swatches, which is always really nice. So I did a knitted tube with them all in, so you can see. So you've got um, Rapunzel, Tom Thumb, um, Little Red Riding Hood, Elves and the Shoemaker, and then um, Sleeping Beauty all in there and I also have little crochet swatches although one of them isn't actually blocked and I haven't done anything with the ends because these were crocheted for me by two lovely friends um, Sophie and Flick during the show weekend <laughs> um, so we have Elves and the Shoemaker crocheted up we have Rapunzel we have Sleeping Beauty we have um, Little Red Riding Hood and then finally the one that isn't blocked we also have Tom Thumb. I think these are colourways that actually crochet up really nicely. It's always quite interesting to see how different colourways look knitted versus crocheted but I find that this style of yarn dyeing, this style um, works very similarly across both knitting and crochet. So there we go, so that is the new collection, that is available now, it's on the website, um, if any of the colours sell out then they're available die to order, so um, yeah, I hope you like them, I'm really pleased with them um, and I'm really glad to finally have them released and actually talked about them. The other thing I wanted to talk about, which I will probably talk about a little bit in the next few shop news as well um, is advent calendars so my 2022 oh my goodness like I cannot can anyone is anyone else having this problem like my brain stops at 2020 so when I start talking about what year it is like my brain stops at 2020 2021 and 2022 like I don't know everything stopped at 2020 in my head <laughs> so my 2022 advent calendar will be launching on the 1st of May. I feel like I've left it really late. So many people have launched so early this year. Um, so I'm sure everyone will already have bought their advent calendars, but hopefully, hopefully not. Um, but mine will be re launching on the 22nd, no, on the 1st, oh my goodness. Mine will be launching on the 1st of May. My 2022 advent calendar will be launching on the 1st of May at 7.30 p.m. Um, British Standard Time, no, British Summertime even, um, because that's what we're in now. 
um, and it will be inspired by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So similar to last year's Narnia advent calendar, um, we're going to do chronological through the book so that you can read along if you want to. I know so many of you actually opened your advent calendar and then read along the book with your kids and things like that. So I really, really enjoyed that aspect of last year's advent calendar. So I wanted to do something similar that way this year. Um, so yeah, we've gone with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It is an absolute favourite in this house. Arthur has it on audio CD and plays it pretty much every night when he goes to bed. He has that running as he goes to sleep. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so yeah, we're going to go chronologically through the advent calendar so it won't be a fade, but you can expect lots of bright, cheerful colours inspired by the characters, inspired by the sweets and the treats and events in the book. Um, and things like that. I am so excited about it. I actually bought, and in fact, I'm gonna get up and grab it. Um, we didn't have a physical copy of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in the house for some reason. When I read it to Arthur, I got it out the library and um, he's obviously got the audio version. Um, but I ordered this book from, I just got it on Amazon, but I ordered this one, which is an illustrated version um, so it's going to be fantastic for kind of pictures and things like that and it's got all of the little pictures in there. Um, Augustus Gloop's mother after he goes up the pipe. Um, there's just so many of the wonderful Quentin Blake pictures in this book. Um, so I'm really really excited about the advent calendar. This year I'm going to be offering the advent calendar on four bases I think. So you can get it on um, merino nylon four ply um, in a 10 gram mini, in a 20 gram mini and I'm also going to offer a four ply sparkle base as well because why not? I can't resist a sparkle base but that will only be available on 20 grams. And then I'm also going to offer um, a 20 gram DK base as well. So 10 gram is on just merino nylon um, sock base and then 20 gram is available on merino nylon sort of standard merino nylon sock base sparkle and dk um, and it's a merino nylon dk um and then so you'll get so each advent calendar will, will contain 24 minis in whichever of those bases that you choose all individually wrapped up um, i'm also going to include a 100 gram skein for um Christmas Day, 100 gram skein this year as standard across the boxes. Um, and you'll be able to choose your base to some extent for that. I'm gonna offer, um, I can't remember quite what I've offered, um, but I think I'm gonna do Merino Nylon, um, Sparkle or DK. And you can actually choose, if you've gone for a 10 gram mini, you can choose any of those bases. If you've gone for a DK advent, you can choose any of those bases for your 100 gram skein. I think that's how I've got it set up in the listing. Um, and then you will also have um, some sweet treats and some extras. There are going to be a few extras this year. I'm quite excited about um, one of them. I've, I've, I've got a plan and I quite like the idea of it and we'll see. But anyway, there will be a few small extras. This year I won't be shipping them in a box um, just to cut down on postage costs and packing, making it easier to pack them and things as well. Storage space is an issue when you're packing all of these boxes as well. Um, so they will be shipped in postal bags, but they will be contained in something in the postal bag. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, cost information, um, pricing information and everything, I think I will be adjusting slightly to what I said, I think on Instagram the other day, um, because I had to check a few bits and pieces, but I will be getting the pricing information up um, ASAP. And um, I think I might have even done that on the website already. I'm not sure. Anyway, all the information is on my website and the pre-orders go live on the 1st of May. And I will be offering payment plans. That was the other thing I needed to say. Payment plans. I will be offering payment plans. Um, there'll be three part payment plans. So the first one will be in May when the advents go live. Then um, the next payment will be July and then the final payment will be September. So it's every other month and I'm going to split the cost straight into thirds basically. So the first one will be a third of the cost plus your shipping and that initial payment, excluding the shipping, that initial payment will be a non-refundable deposit. Um, and then um, 
the th then you'll pay a third in July, a third in September. If you haven't f made all your payments by the end of September, um, then I will have to cancel your order. I will refund everything apart from that initial deposit because that covers the cost of me actually having to purchase the yarn and all of the extras and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. If you've got any advent questions, then let me know. I'm really excited about this year's advent calendar. I kind of want to start planning all the colourways and dyeing it all now. Anyway, I have definitely talked to you for far, far, far too long today. Um, I am going to do something for an hour. I've got about 40 minutes. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I might actually sit down and do the audio, record the audio for the um, Glam's Castle vlog so that I can get that up this week as well. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and putting up with a very long rambly podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and let me know let me just comment just comment and talk to me because i like that i like getting comments on my videos and i like getting being able to chat and respond back to you so i don't have some specific question to ask you to comment about but you know tell me what you're working on do that tell me what you're working on at the moment so that i can chat to you um and if you have enjoyed the video and you haven't done so yet then please give it a thumbs up down below cheesy thumbs up moment and also um hit subscribe because then you get notified when I put videos up. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you very, very soon. Hopefully it won't be a month again this time. <laughs> Bye!